All right, so I have this selection that I used with the magic wand to give me kind of a stencil mask for my eraser. And so I erased. But you can see there's a lot of little residual blue sky. So now what I'm going to do, zoom out, command minus, use the regular lasso, and just get this big chunk out of there. And now this is my favorite thing about Photoshop. When you use the magic wand, the thing it likes to select most is empty space. So if I select the empty space in the layer, so I'll just show you the layer on its own. If I select the empty space with contiguous turned off, it will very nicely select all those things I just erased, right? And then I can use select and mask. Remember that? And I can feather it. So I, it remembers my settings, a 1.6 feather, shifting the edge, growing the edge by 10% at a radius of five pixels. I say, okay. And then I just hit delete. And I hit delete again. And I hit delete again. Because <laughs> it's feathering, so it's taking away a little bit more each time. And that's going to get a, get rid of that kind of blue um, bloom on everything. At least for the most part, in a way that's pretty serviceable. And then I can just go in with my lasso. And by hand, just like I did with the mountain, I can reshape some of this organic material. So the, the ones that look a little weird don't fit in the scale. I can cut out and customize because I don't want them in my print to draw attention. Right. Now, the other thing that's going to help to knock that blue down, because I kind of like it in some places, is playing with the color balance and the levels. So if I go to Image Adjustments Levels, let me play with darkening it a little bit and limiting the highlights. And that helps. And then it's all a little too green and too blue. So color balance, I can change the temperature of it. I can make it a little bit more red. That helps. A little bit more yellow. A little bit less green. And the highlights maybe take down the yellows a little bit. And then the shadows take away from the blue. Not that much, though. That's helping. So you can see that makes a big difference in how believable those that vegetation is on the base of that mountain. And then I'll just go in and these little highlights can delete them. And this is getting pretty picky for a fantasy composite. Now, professionally, this skill is most often used for concept art. And you only get really, really picky about it if you are the final compositing artist in like a feature film, like putting together a special effects sequence, and then you're just scrutinizing every pixel. But to put together a fantasy landscape in the time we're given for this is basically what you're asked you know, it's like a three to five hour project if you were just to mock up a concept for a new planet surface or something. And it's called concept art because it's just meant to show the idea. So it's not so much about the detail. All right, now, because I've really looked at that reference, I've seen I have a few things in it that are problematic, like people. <laughs> Right? I don't want these people. So what can I do about that? I can delete them, but I, I would need to cover them up with something, right? Uh, so yeah, there's some different tools we can use. There's like content aware, but let's see what my other elements are first, right? But I am going to be aware of that. So I'm going to mark that a slightly different color. I need to return to that to make sure um, I've addressed all those issues. I'm also going to stretch it a little bit 
because we want overlap to happen and the, the guides show me where overlap is happening. So I'm actually going to use warp and just stretch that coastline because I don't want it to be perfectly horizontal. I want it to keep kind of an arc to it. Then I'm going to stretch the water line as well to my edges. But so far, so good. And if I wanted to give that coastline even some shape, I could try to do that with warp. You know, kind of bend it forward and back. But I don't think I want to at this point. All right, so the next layer are these foreground rocks. And I am just going to first start with color adjustments. So levels, maybe even brighten these up. Whoop, wrong layer. Image adjustment levels. Brighten them up a little bit because they're in the foreground. All right. Maybe dim the highlights just a bit. And now play with the color balance. And warm them up. And then the shadows I'm going to make cooler, just slightly. And then the highlights warm them up. Yeah. OK, now I'm going to use a 100% eraser that is very soft edged and pretty big. Not that big. Roughly 1,000 pixels. And with that 100% eraser, I'm going to get rid of that hard edge at the top. Right? Hard edges are the enemy. And I'm going to blend down this coastline a little bit. Okay, And this gives me an element that I can transform, Command-T, and kind of shift up so that those horizons meet. And that will do a lot to kind of cover up the, um, the people, right, if I can get it in the right way. And then I can even warp it and just kind of push and pull so it's not so bland and straight. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay, and now I'm going to shrink my eraser. I've gotten rid of the hard edge, so I can go to a lower opacity. I'm going to ghost it a little bit. And notice how I'm kind of avoiding the people, not bringing them out. Yep, often smart to avoid the people. Now here I'm kind of merging this hillside with some of the vegetation I have from the other layer. So this is just a really easy way to blend, just erasing into each other. And then little things are problematic of that little bit of blue. We can go in there on the layer behind, delete that. Yeah, pretty good. 
pretty good. I might delete this little chunk here. Oh, but there's nothing behind it, so that's problematic. So this is where we can do what's called internal compositing. And from this layer, I can take some chunk of vegetation here, duplicate it, move it to the corner here, stretch it. Let it kind of fill in just on the edge and then erase away. Now I'm thinking this whole edge I want to shift up a little bit to about there. And just keep keep with the blending. I don't like how bright that edge is, so I'm gonna take it down. Gotta be careful to avoid the water line there. Ooh, so tough at the waterline. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to select out just the part I want to erase. And to do that, I'm going to use the polygon lasso. Which will give me a nice straight line from here to here, slight angle. But I have to close the loop on it. Okay, and now it will only let me erase right up to that line, so I don't keep erasing the edge of the water. So like that. Not too bad. Blend this a little bit. Because I'm only at 40% of opacity, I get to kind of choose how much comes through, how dark the shadows are, all of that. Now there are people, tiny little people holding hands on the beach. So what are we gonna do with them? I'm going to do some internal compositing. There are more clever ways to do this with fancy tools in Photoshop, but we're gonna do it very directly. So I'm just gonna take a little patch, Command J that patch, and then move that patch on top of them. Then I can always stretch it, modify it as I need. Okay. So now I have two water sources, right? With those foreground rocks. And I like them both because I'm gonna try something, I'm gonna duplicate, Command J, turn off the one underneath, and then I'm going to play with different opacities and see how much of the, the different waters I wanna come through. So what I think I'm gonna do is use that big eraser at a low opacity and kind of ghost away a little bit of this to merge the two, much like I did with the sky, to merge these two water sources. 